Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to look at how to superimpose a painting, portrait, or something else on a wall and make it look realistic. Now one of the people that commented on my videos was asking how to superimpose a picture of something onto a building to make it look realistic and we're going to do just that. Now I went onto the Creative Commons site my favorite place to look at Flickr and I found this kind of a textured picture of a wall here that I'm using. Then I have a picture of the state of Georgia with the Georgia flag on there and you can see how this is done. I have this superimposed. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Right now I have the layers uh, hidden so we can go back to the view here and make the layers appear here. We have this Georgia map and you can see that I'm using overlay blending mode kind of gives it that uh, concrete look to it I can also go in here and use hard light which gives it a little bit more of a painting feel as if somebody had taken a brush to it now you can see that all the gr granularity is on this wall let's go ahead and show you how I did this I'm gonna start here by going back to revert to my original wall here and that's what you have to do to start out then you also need a picture of something else that you're going to put on the wall and in my case I just took this picture and I'm gonna superimpose it now just like a lot of the tattoo videos uh, tutorials that I've already done and some of the other ones the golf ball picks I am going to use the displacement map to make this work so in order to do that, I have to convert this picture over into a black and white. Very easy. We go to the Enhance, and we convert this to a black and white. Now, you want to have a lot of contrast in your wall, and right now I don't see a whole lot of contrast. So I'm going to select one of these other options, and I'm going to keep going until I see a very, very contrasty look. That one's pretty good but there's not enough dark in it. Ah, there we go. Here is one right here, and that's the infrared effect. And if we wanted to make this a little bit lighter, we could go over and bump up the green just a little bit. And when we're happy with that, let's select OK. You can see this is very contrasty right here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to save this out. I'm going to save this out instead of a JPEG I'm going to save this out as a Photoshop document a PSD and I'm going to call this contrast now I've already done this and I've saved this on my desktop you can see right here it says contrast PSD so I've already saved this we want a contrasty black and white image saved as a Photoshop document I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already saved that and I'm gonna go back to once again revert back to the original photo. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to take this image and we need to drag it on top of this image. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to drag it. Now I have this open already before we even started. Kind of like a cooking show I had both of these images open already. Now this does not look realistic like it has been superimposed on this wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. This is one of my favorite features of Photoshop. Now, this is where you have to do a little bit of legwork. I have selected two and two. What that does is it gives the depth of how much this, the grain is going to show up on this. Now, before I did it 10 and it looked horrible so I had to back it down to 2 you're going to have to do a little bit of guesswork here you might start with 10 you might start with 1 or 2 I'd go ahead and start somewhere around 2 and select OK leave it on stretch to fit and repeat edge pixels select OK now it says open your displacement map I saved it on my desktop and I remember I called it contrast.psd and I'm going to open that up and as you can see it kind of gives it this feel as if this is being painted on this uh, cinder block here I guess now it still doesn't look realistic because you can't see through this 
So what do we have to do now? We must change our blending modes. Now if you don't see your layer palette already, go under your window and select layers to see your layer palette. At the top of the layer palette is your blending mode. This is how you're going to see through your image. Now two different settings that I like to use here. I like to use the overlay. Now the overlay really gives it that see-through look as if somebody's painted it and it's really, really weathered. This might just be the look that you're looking for. See, it's as if somebody has rubbed some of the paint off. Now if you don't like that look, you can go back to your blending mode again. You can choose hard light and that kind of gives it a little bit more of uh, a painted look as if somebody had just gone in there and given it a fresh coat of paint. Now if this is still a little bit too much for you, remember you can go to your opacity and dial it down just a little bit. And there we go and you can see a little bit more through that. And so there you have it. This is superimposing a picture on top of a building and this works with pretty much any type of wall and any type of texture that you have. Just remember, go and save out whatever your texture is, save it out as a black and white and make sure it's very contrasty. Then apply the displacement filter map to this particular layer, whatever layer that you have the actual image on there. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you had a good time with this tutorial. Please give me a couple thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on the iTunes store. Thanks and have a great day.